Numbers have an important story to tell, but they rely on you to give them a clear and convincing voice by creating charts. Charts are a powerful way to simplify the complexity in our data and present it in a form which is comprehensible, insightful, and actionable. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to switch the source data for a chart by using drop lists. And then we take our chart to a whole different horizon by making the chart title itself act as a drop list. So let's dive in. Here is my start file available for you to download and follow along. I'm also providing a step-by-step -step instructions guide for your reference. In this worksheet, I have sales data from a car dealer showing the sales of five types of cars in 12 months. I want to create a chart for the car sales for each month. Instead of creating 12 charts, I want to combine them all in one single chart and switch the monthly data feeding the chart using a drop list. My project consists of four parts. Creating a data preparation table, creating and formatting the chart itself, moving the chart to a dashboard, creating a super dynamic chart title with a unique functionality. I start my project by creating a data preparation table. And the data preparation table can be created either by using classic functions or by using dynamic array functions. The first step in creating the data preparation table is to create the drop list for the month. So I'm selecting two non-adjacent cells in row number 10. And to create the drop list, I go to the data tab of the ribbon. And to the right side of the data tab, I click on data validation. I'm the first drop list. I select list under allow. I put the blinking cursor in the source box and then I click and drag to select the different month. When I hit OK, I would have created two drop lists. Let me select the same month from both drop lists. Let's say I'm selecting the month of February. The next step is to create row labels for my data preparation tables. And I do that by selecting the labels from the source list. I hit Control C to copy them. And then I select the destination cells by hitting Ctrl because they are non adjacent, and I hit Ctrl V to paste. Now, if I change the sorting in the source list, I should be able to extract the corresponding values for the sales of each card type in each month. So, on the data tab, I'm going to sort it, let's say, ascending, and now I start creating my functions. In the first data preparation table, I'll be using classic functions. And to do that, I'll be using an index function, so I type equal index, and then I hit tab. The index function is asking me about the range from which I want to extract values. I want to extract values from this entire range of numbers, and because I'll be copying the function down, I hit F4 to lock it, and then I hit comma. The index function requires a row number and a column number to get the number at the intersection of the row and column. And to do that, I'm going to use a match function. I'll be typing match, and then I hit tab. The first match function will look at the card type, and then accordingly will extract the position of that card type in the source list. So what's the lookup value? My lookup value is the card type one cell to my left, and then I hit comma. Where do you look for it? I look for it in this entire range in the original source list, and because I'm copying down, I hit F4 to lock it, and then I hit comma. The last argument, it's an exact match, so I type zero, and I close the bracket for the match function. Should you wish to test what this part will be returning, then hover over the screen tip and click on the argument row number, and then hit F9, and that will show you the result that will be returned when the function calculates. Don't forget, hit Ctrl Z, because we don't want to hard code values in our calculation. I click at the end and I type comma. The last argument of the index function, what is the column number? The column number corresponds to the selected month from the drop list. And I'll be using a second match function to get it. So 
I type match and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? My lookup value is the month label coming from the drop list. And because I'm copying down, I hit F4 to lock it. And then I hit comma. Where do you look for it? I look for it in this entire top row in the source list. I select it. And because I'm copying down, I lock it by hitting F4. It's another exact match. So I type comma zero for exact. I close the bracket for the match function. I close the bracket for the index function. When I hit enter, it's returning the value corresponding to the card type and the month. I can copy this function all the way down. We can also create our data preparation table by using a nested XLOOKUP function. You can refer to the step-by-step -step guide to learn how I created it. My next step is to create and format the chart itself. And I want to prepare for that by creating a dynamic chart title. So in cell D17, I'll be typing an equal sign. And in double quotation, I'll be typing some text and join it to the result of the drop list. Car sales for the month off, then a space. I close the double quotes. And I use a joining operator Shift 7 on your keyboard and then I click on the drop list. When I hit enter, it says car sales for the months of February, and if I change my option from the drop list, my title will change as well. Now let's create the chart itself. I select any single cell in one of the two data preparation tables. I can go to the insert tab of the ribbon and in the charts group, select the column chart, or I can simply use the shortcut Alt F1. The default column chart is created, and I want to improve its appearance a little bit. I click on one of these horizontal lines, the horizontal grid lines. I don't want them, so I hit delete. I click on one of the columns, the data points. I want to reduce the gap and change their color. So I'll be using the shortcut control one to bring the format data series pane. I have a gap with slider that I could drag to the left or simply type the number in the box. I'll be typing 125. So I reduce the gap between the different columns. I want to change the color of each column or each data point. So I click on the fill and line icon. You will see the fill command collapsed. You can click on the right pointing triangle to expand it. And then I check the box for vary color by point. So each one of the data points will appear in a different color. I close the format data series pane. With the data points still selected, I want to bevel them. I want to emboss them. And I do that by clicking on the Format tab. I click on the down arrow for Shape Effects. And I hover over Bevel. And I select the first option for Beveling. Beveling adds a nice appearance. And it's different than a 3D chart or a perspective, which is not a good practice. I want to bring the data labels here at the top, so I click on the plus sign in the upper right corner of my chart, the chart elements, and then I check the box for data labels. The next thing I want to do is to create a dynamic chart title. So I click on the chart title, and then I hit the F2, keep an eye on the formula bar, then the blinking cursor appears in the formula bar, type an equal sign, and click on the dynamic chart title in cell D17 that we created seconds ago. I hit enter. I also want to emboss the entire chart and that will help me with the next functionality. So I click on the outer border of the chart and go to the format tab of the ribbon, click on the down arrow for shape effects and I'll be beveling the entire chart. Now that I created my chart, I want to test the functionality. So I go to the drop list and I select a different month, and sure enough, my chart is dynamic. My next step will be moving the chart to another worksheet in preparation for creating a dashboard. So I click on the outer border of the chart, and then I copy the chart, and then I go to the chart worksheet that I created specifically for this purpose, and I paste my chart, Control v Now that I pasted my chart, if I wish to change the month, I have to go to the source worksheet, in order to select a different option from the drop list. So to make my life easier, I'm going to bring the drop list in this worksheet. So I'm selecting cell E3, 
and I want to create the same exact drop list. This time I'll be using the shortcut Alt D L, Tab L Tab. With my blinking cursor in the source box, I click in the source worksheet and I want to select the 12 months and then I hit OK and I would have created my drop list. Let me test. I click on the drop list and select March. The drop list is working, but nothing changes in my chart because actually the chart is governed by the changes in the drop list in the source worksheet. That's not a problem. We can fix it by going to the source worksheet and I want to delete my drop list from this cell and I can do that by using the same shortcut Alt D L and then I click on clear all. When I hit OK, I would have removed the drop list. I want to link this cell to cell E3 in the chart worksheet. So how do I do this? I delete the contents of cell E10. Don't worry about what happens in the chart and the data preparation table. That will be fixed the moment I type an equal sign. I click on the chart worksheet and then I'm unable to select the cell. So I'm going to type directly E3 in the formula bar. The moment I do that, everything will be restored. And now the control of this chart will be through the drop list in the dashboard. I go to the dashboard, the chart worksheet, and I test. If I click on the down pointing arrow, if I select a different month, everything works fine. My next step will be adding a magical touch to the chart title and converting the chart title itself to be a dynamic drop list. And to do that, I'm going to move the chart and position it on top of cell E3 in a way that the down pointing arrow aligns with the chart title. So I can select from the drop list. The problem is when I click away, I don't see the down pointing arrow and it only appears by selecting cell E3 by typing its cell reference in the name box. The moment I hit enter, it brings the down pointing arrow. How can I automate this step? I need to create a macro to automate this step. So whenever the user clicks on the chart, the macro will be triggered and it will bring the down pointing arrow. To create a macro, I need the developer tab of the ribbon. If you don't have the developer tab of the ribbon, you can right click on any tab and select customize the ribbon. And in the Excel options dialog box, you check the developer tab. I'm not going to do that because I already have it. I click on the developer tab and I want to record a macro. A macro automates repetitive tasks. It's recording your keyboard punches and your mouse clicks. Before I record, make sure that user relative cell reference is not selected and click on record macro. I want to give a name to my macro and I'm going to name it, let's say switching and I hit OK. I'm in the process of recording right now and the only step that this macro will be performing is to select cell E3. So I go to the name box and I type E3 and I hit enter. Now that E3 is selected, I can see the drop list and I want to stop the recording by clicking on stop recording on the developer tab. I created my macro and I want to test it. And to test it, I want to link it to my chart. So I want to select my chart by clicking on the outer border of the chart. And then I right click and from the right click menu, I select assign macro. The assign macro dialog box opens and I select the single macro that I have. Remember that when you have a macro in your workbook, you cannot save it in the .xlsx format and you have to save it in the .xlsm, a macro enabled Excel file. When I hit OK, now let's enjoy the functionality. When you hover over the chart, the mouse pointer appears as a pointing finger. And if you click anywhere on the chart, you are bringing the down pointing arrow by triggering the macro. And now I can enjoy the functionality by switching to a different month. And I created an impressive dynamic chart where the chart title itself is governing the chart. We learned in this tutorial how to switch the source values of a chart by using a drop list, either with an index and match function or nested XLOOKUP functions. To make it a lot more impressive, we converted the chart title itself to a drop list 
by using a simple macro. I hope you found value in this tutorial. And until we meet in another learning adventure, that was Nabil Murad. Thank you for watching and see you next time.